well, the uh, <coughs> suppression of uh, West Papuan independence and the atrocities carried out. Uh, we happen to be right now at the 15th anniversary of one of the massacres. Uh, and the support for it, uh, the robbery of resources, the support for it by Australia, Western powers, a major scandal now 60 years. So this goes back to the whole Cold War? Didn't have much to do with the Cold War. I mean, the Cold War is always a pretext for everything that happened, but it would have been pretty much the same if Russia didn't exist. It was devastated, demolished. I mean, politics really has yet to recover in any serious way. Uh, so sure, this uh, West Papua and East Timor and the other cases that fall right within that. No Russians being replayed over and over right now, in fact. Well, John Rundiak tells me time to time, you know, I, I met John 10 years ago in Amsterdam before his stroke, <clears throat> and I, but even afterwards, the little that he can speak, he will say things like, Papua, finished, culture, gone, 20 years, he'll say, be gone. Now, is that happening? What, what, well, you know. And, and what is the response of well, the moral world in order to well, something for, like Unfortunately, the, what will happen to the, the actual populations, their culture, their society under this very severe repression with uh, corporate support, you know, the mining, uh, Western support, and so on, that the prospects aren't very bright, but you really can't tell. It's, um, it takes a East Timor, close, close analog. What happened there? Uh, what happened in the, by the late 70s, it was virtual genocide. They maybe killed a quarter of the population. It looked totally hopeless. I mean, the number of, you could count, you, know, in, you could fit into this room the number of activists who were working on it. I can name them for you, practically, in Australia and here. It just looked hopeless. Well, it took a long time. Uh, finally, in 1999, uh, there was another outburst of Indonesian violence and repression. You know, they practically destroyed the capital city, drove a couple hundred thousand people into the hills. The U.S. continued to support them, continued. Uh, the uh, national security advisor for Clinton, Sandy Berger, said, you know, we. It's not our affair if people carry out massacres and slaughter. You know, we can't do anything about it. We've got to continue to support Indonesia. The U.S. Uh, military forces were carrying out joint operations with the Indonesian army after all of this happened. Finally, in September 11th, uh, Clinton was at an international conference. There was a lot of international protest at that time. There was also a dom rising domestic protest. Partly it was the activist movements that had been working for decades. Partly it was uh, far-right Catholic groups. In the, uh, East Timor was Catholic. Indonesia is Muslim, so that was a complicated story. I can't go into the details. It was possible to get influential far-right Catholic groups to put pressure on the government. Uh, all of these factors combined, uh, Clinton informed the Indonesian generals, the game is over, a couple of sentences. Next day they withdrew, could have happened for 25 years. After they withdrew, a UN peacekeeping force, Australian peacekeeping force entered, which was a good thing. You, know. you take a look at how that's handled in history. That's handled as a great case of humanitarian intervention. I mean, what it really was was an extraordinary scandal. 25 years, the U.S. continued to support the crimes, atrocities, and virtual genocide. They could have stopped it in one minute. You don't have to invade anyone. You don't need sanctions. You don't need threats. Just stop supporting it, and it's over. That's what the record shows, and that's called humanitarian intervention. Uh, it's, it's a pretty striking story of uh, 
about intellectual culture, but let's turn to West Papua. Could be the same. West Papua, that. I, I think uh, the West Papuan resistance withstands with other cases of resistance to massive terror and oppression as a, a symbol of the kind of an inspiring symbol of what humans can accomplish. And it may yet succeed if the West is willing to face up to its own responsibilities and actions, it can succeed.